Hey guys, before we get started on this video, I need to explain something. Throughout the video, you'll hear me talking about going to this gate, that this project's going on. Well, I've realized now that it's going to be a really long video if I do all that in one video. So I'm going to finish with making the part, the assembly part, to mount the keypad. And I go through and I show you the difference in pedestals for mounting boxes and things like that on, and why you should use certain kinds of pedestals so you don't have problems down the road on your gates. So just bear in mind, there's gonna be another part where I take this over to a gate and install it and put on a really good operator and make it to where the guy doesn't have any problems for years. So stick with me. Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm gonna to show you some more things uh, related to gates and what I do to make make them special and I will whoa, whoa 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 you're not even looking over here you're coveting my mag drill again stop that that gummit over here guys over here you know keep your eyes up here not there what is it the women say my eyes are not here <laughs> anyway some people showed an interest in some of the little things I do for gates and stuff, so I might as well film this while I'm doing it. I've got nothing better to do except work. Uh, a quick tutorial on the posts that hold keypads. Now, 99% of the time I install a very specialized keypad that takes your picture and calls your cell phone and completely takes care of the gate. In Texas, you have to have a license to s install anything that takes a picture or connects to the internet on an entrance gate. It's a stupid law, but I have the license. Uh, most people can't get them because of criminal history, but I have a license and that's what I do most of the time when I'm not acting or screwing around in here. Or watching out for Don. Don's over at his shop working on something. He'll have to tell you about it when he comes over here. Anyway, for years and years and years and years, I have always purchased the little metal, we we'll call them pedestal, that holds keypads at a gate. And the reason I purchased them was I don't have a machine to make the kind that I like. And the reason I don't have a machine is because until recently I could buy them easy and it was done and didn't have to mess with it. But that's changed lately. This is a pedestal that has a standard mounting face on it. It's two inch square. And this one is bent to a 90 degree. This one is made out of one solid piece of metal and they bent it instead of cutting it here and welding it and cutting it here and welding it. I truly do not like pedestals that are cut and welded in places. The reason is most of the keypads that I put on have wires going to them and it's a thin insulation and the outside may look really nice and smooth, but the inside is also sharp and jagged, and if you try to drag wires through it, you're gonna tear them up. And even if you don't tear them up, the wires lay on those sharp edges in two places. Gravity, heat and cold expansion, works your way into that insulation after a while, and you get shorts in those wires. So that's why I've always liked these. They're smooth. The last ones I bought from my supplier looked okay on the outside, but I was feeling resistance as I was pulling some wires in and I figured it out. They had just formed a 90 degree angle and welded it in. Well, hell, I can do that. I couldn't get any more of these. So, when I find some of these or take these apart, I take and I reclaim them and I sandblast them and, and turn them into a useful 
hide them again. That's if they're not rusty and all that. Paint them back up and they're good to go. But that's hard to do too because I don't get a lot of these. This one was too short because all the things that I put in have cameras. And a standard old 42 inch post is too low at a car because most people in Texas drive pickup trucks. So all you get is a picture of the arm. So I've had to go to increase the height up to about 54 inches so that we get good pictures. And this was one of the old short ones that I took, cut off and put a, a base on the back. So now this can be mounted on concrete. Still got to take it and put it in the sandblaster. But that's the problem with these. These are good if you can find them like this, not welded. You don't want that ridge. Since I can't buy them anymore, I said, what the heck, and I just start making them myself. If I make them up in 10 at a time, it's no big deal. Now, I don't have that bender, and someday I'll make one if I keep doing this. Uh, but in the meantime, I make a different kind, and I'll show you what that one is now. In fact, I was getting ready to do stuff. This is just regular old two inch square pipe. This is a plate that I make on the CNC and uh, we whip these out, cut a circle, and this is a standard bolt hole for a, a standard keypad. And the hole goes through where I can do wires. This is a base that I cut out on the CNC for welding them on if I don't need in ground. And basically this goes up here and I cut everything on, what is that, a 22 and a half degree angle and put it on my welding table here and hook that up right there. And then this one, this one is cut both sides 22, this is 22 and then this is square. And I set everything up and weld it up on this, using the edge of my table to square it up. Kind of using the table as a jig. Just a little. There. Then I take and after I get this welded on, I weld this plate on the end of it and it's finished basically. Now that being said, this is a good way to do it, but it still has the, the rough edges inside, no different than welding a, a 90 degree curve on it. This, I don't have to buy anything but two inch square tubing, some cuts, and we're done. To get around the problem of this really rough edge on the inside after I weld them together, I now take and put a piece of three quarter inch uh, liquidite plastic conduit through the hole and down around the curve of the uh, the pedestal so that it's protected and I draw my wires up through it. That works and that keeps those wires protected. My thing I tell all my customers is you seem like a nice person but I don't want to ever see you again unless you need another gate opener. My job is to make this thing where it's as bulletproof as I can and that's why people call me back all the time. After all this is said and done, I'm working on a gate that I'll take you out to and show you that the owner doesn't want it installed in the standard way. So I've had to run over here to the shop and make a new holder to hold the keypad and I thought you'd be interested in seeing it. Either going to have to make a bigger shop or start storing this stuff over at Don's. Now what I need to do is cut this right here. I need to weld a plate onto the side. Can, you're not looking. Are you coveting? No, you're not. Okay. I'll, I'll help you out here. The customer doesn't want it mounted the normal way. Uh, 
we're along a busy highway and he has three gates to his property all in a row. And the first two, uh, we put access controls on it a couple years ago and he just loves it. And then he bought this new property that's got another gate and it's done crappily, so I'm over there fixing it. Because of the product that I use, you can control it all from your cell phone and he doesn't need to do it any other way. So he would like me, instead of putting the keypad out to where you can reach it from your car, he wants it mounted right next to the gate so that people have to get out, go over there and, and use it. And it's okay. It A, protects this a little bit from people running over them with their cars. B, it's a very low use gate. He just really wants to be able to control it from his phone. And so not a lot of traffic. It, it, if we do it this way, we don't have to dig ditches. So that's what he wanted. So I went over, looked at the job, saw what we're gonna to have to do. And now I need to make a holder for this unit that will weld onto the top pipe rail of his fence and allow us to hook up all the wires and protect them. So what I'm doing is cutting off a piece of this two inch, basically converting this in ground to a, a concrete mountable base. And the, the scrap that I'm cutting off of it will allow me to make this piece. I use a standard plate that I make and I will weld that here. And then I have a uh, just pressed cap that goes on top of these. And I found that's nice because I'm gonna drill a hole through here. And then on the back side, I'll drill another hole that I can mount a, a connection to so it's all in conduit all the way to the operator. That way everything neat, protected against the weather and cow seeding on it and things like that. And it's pretty easy to do, just gotta do this, so. All along. Oh, when I'm through, this will mount just like this. And the uh, bottom part will be welded to the gate. You'll see it. I'm doing it this way. This is the antenna for the cell signal. It's up in, up in the air and there's no interference from pipes and things like that. Now this is my little, I call it a dog house. This is where I keep my cutoff saw. I've got a nicer saw that needs to be rebuilt outside. But I gotta go get to it. And everybody else is wanting stuff, so. I, for years I kept this in there. Well, I hope you can hear me. I turned on the air conditioner. It's 87 degrees in here and I'm hot. So basically all I'm doing is lining up this fence here with the blade. And then I'll bolt it back down. This in. So saw gets no love. It sits out here in the unair conditioned most of the time space and just keeps cutting along. I've had this for 20 years. Cut. Just roll the old machine back in the doghouse. Now, the only problem with that is 
on top of the doghouse has become a mess. Oh, it's always something. All right, now that I got a little piece of stuff ready, this is kind of on an angle so that it'll fit that pipe. The pipe goes downhill like this. Our plate needs to mount like this. And so I'll just line it up. Now I always leave a little bit on the top there so that this cap will fit, fit over it. That way you can get and fish wires through here and just put the cap back on. So right there. And on the back side. Need another hole so I can put a junction box here and then it'll have the fittings that go into the conduit. And that way you can snake the wire up here and out the other hole. All right. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Well, almost. This is my Hodgins, H-O-U-G-E-N, mag drill. For probably 30 years, I lusted after one of these. And finally, when I could do it and justify it, I bought one. This one was expensive, but it's probably one of the best on the market, and that's what I wanted. So, Don used this to drill all the holes in his welding table. I forgot how many holes it was. He can't count anyway, so we'll never know. Anyway, this unit has a lubrication tank up here at the top, and you, you can mix up their fluid and... and uh, turn on the valve and it drips it through here. But for stuff like this, it, it gets pretty sloppy. So what I do is I use a, a cutting fluid and put directly on the bit here. And folks, this is the one I use. It doesn't look like much. <laughs> and this thing's been around here, maybe this one, 15 years. I just don't use it all the time but I carry a squeeze bottle of it on my work trailer. Uh, back in the 70s, my high school shop teacher turned me onto this stuff. And uh, Joe, I stole your little bottle. I'm emitting it now. He never used it. And I went and bought a gallon of it and gave him a quart back and he died about five years ago and I bet you that Court's still there. But this is the best tapping, cutting, drilling hard hole fluid I've ever, 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 ever found. When I found this and spiral point taps, my whole life changed. A spiral point tap, this fluid, and a drill motor, battery powered drill motor, means there's not a hole you can't tap, period. I power quickly. So this is one of the best things. And for some reason, I can't find my little cup that I had it in. So I'm just getting out another one. This is just a regular cup they use for kids painting stuff. You buy these dollar a piece somewhere at the hobby store. It's got a little spill proof lid on it. I get you a little flux brush and pour some in there and you're good to go for quite a while. This stuff is sticky. I mean, uh, really viscous and sticky. And so it sticks to the metal and the bit and just makes your life so much easier it's on the inside. Lost so long ago, I lost the cap. Anyway, put your little brush in there. And now you got something that you can lube up almost anything and keeps it if it spills, you know, from spilling when you tip it over. Good way to do it, cheap. So, I've got to set this going. What I usually do is 
Oh, that's right. That gummit, that bit's too little. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's falling. Yeah, it is. So what I usually do is put two bigger pieces of metal under the base. Reach around here and turn on the magnet. Reach around here and turn on the magnet. That's the on button. There's the magnet. And now, that ain't going nowhere. And that's what you want. Put that there. That's where that'll be. Put a little piece of insurance. Wife's riding around outside on her mule. But she's put 10,000 miles on that thing. All right. A little bit of cutting fluid on the material. It doesn't take much, just a little bit. Don't be sitting here when this is running because if this for some reason slips it'll cut you open. Okay. Just as easy as that. Bring you over here on the other side so you can see it cut. Nice hole. Little slug. Another one right there. My gate telling me my wife's going in and out. All right, let's go with this one. And there's enough cutting fluid on that stuck to it that you don't need to put any more. Ta-da! This is now a very religious piece of metal. Get it? Holy. Okay, turn the magnet off. Put it back over here where Don can't steal it. Bob's your uncle. We'll get something to clean that off with. And I always take and clean off these little caps too. They uh, usually have oil left over from the pressing that they do. All right. So now. We have our three pieces ready. Well, you're not watching. You're still thinking about that mag girl. Have our three pieces ready. Goes like that. 
That'll go on top. Bob's your uncle. Just got to remember which way this goes. Now in the last video, I was uh, showing off my Optrail in its breathing system. And some people were saying, oh, you know, you gotta be careful of them. If you put it back here, you might be smelling farts. Well, I've been around for 65 years now and, and I believe I know what a fart smells like. And when I'm wearing this, I don't smell any. Even a Don kind of fart, nothing. I don't smell the welding fumes. I have yet to smell anything through this. And that makes it really nice, especially if you're doing some galvanized welding. You get rid of all that danger. Of course, this is bad enough. But I uh, am gonna put this on without the air system because I'm just gonna do some some few little two inch welds real quick and I can hold my breath for that long. But actually you can breathe around through that hole. Not very well, but you can. Sort of like when John Cleish was uh, in the show Faulty Towers. If you haven't ever seen Faulty Towers, look it up. It's classic English humor. And uh, he was uh, talking about a little dog in the restaurant near a window and the lady was griping about it and says, my little precious is going to, to, to get you cold. And she said, well, I'm sorry, but we need the windows open, but, but she, I can't have her doing this, breathing this in. He says, maybe you should put it in a plastic bag. And the lady goes, well, then he wouldn't be able to breathe, would he? Cleesh looks at her and says, he can try, he can try. Sorry, dog lovers. I'm a dog lover. I got dogs, I've got vet bills you wouldn't believe. Anyway, it was humor. Let's tack this sucker up.
That's about the limit. Getting foggy in there without the air. Some of you may get on to me about not brushing that off and getting all the mill scale. There's very little mill scale and there's very little rust on here and this way as I welded that, it burns right through it. You just sit there and watch it. Another little thing that I do on these is I go inside that hole and I weld all the way around in that hole. And the reason I do that is I don't want water going between this and the plate and getting into that unit. Now, that unit right there is $2,900. And frankly, it's the best one on the market. It's worth every penny in my estimation. And I do everything I can to keep the moisture and everything out of that box. So that's why I weld it up in here. And then a couple welds over there, three there, and it's good to go. So now this little cap will go on top of it. And you don't weld these on. They're, they're just pressed on. You can get them on. And then that way I can feed the wires in through the top and then come back in and get to them. We're going to put a box on this. Bob Drunkle. Welded there, welded over there, one on the bottom up there, didn't see very well, and then welded in there. This will weld onto the top of that rail. That keypad will mount on top through these bolting holes, and life will be good. <laughs> 